All right, here we are back with beginning beekeeping in Texas. Um, we're gonna be removing a couple of honey supers today. As you can see, there's quite a bit of honey supers on at the moment, but I want to not kill myself. The last time I did honey, um, it was a 10 hour process. So we're gonna go slow this time. We're gonna try to not interrupt them as much as possible, but we're not I'm trying to not kill me by doing a hundred pounds of honey. <sighs> I'm just worried that if I take them and then, uh, you know, if I take the honey, then it sits in your garage, you know, if there's any high beetle larvae, any wax moths around and I do have wax moths around here that um, they will get in there and just destroy the honey destroy the comb you know small high beetles will really wreck it so you really want to make sure that you don't have any parasites some people freeze the frames for 24 hours um, and then extract after that I'm not really into that. I just try to extract as soon as I, as soon as I get it home. I'll extract um, just to avoid any any problems. You know, I think that's the best the best solution. So we're gonna have a nice blue smoke here. Excellent what you want the reason I like these covers you can smoke them from the bottom that kind of gets them to the point where hey something's coming and then Let's give them a very little bit of smoke because if you smoke them a ton, it will actually make the honey taste like smoke. Which, you know, hey, if you're into that, go for it. But I like my honey sweet, not smoky. They did that once and that was a bad, bad mistake. So rule number one, don't smoke them too much if you're taking the honey off. I'm not sure, I know this one isn't ready. Okay, so they're capping that, they're not ready yet. So I don't wanna take half, half supers, so I'm just gonna close them back up and wait a little more while longer. Highly recommend these uh, straps. They are excellent um, ratchet straps. They keep raccoons out. Not so much bears, but raccoons for sure. I've seen raccoon prints on top of my hives. I know for a fact these ladies have at least one, maybe two ready to go. They do get a little defensive. Just give them a little smoke. So I know this one's ready to come off. I'm pretty sure about this one. I know this one is not. So. Uh, there's a cow. Interesting. Alrighty then. Alright, we're back. So we have a cow audience. All things great in, uh, you know, rural Texas. Hi, cow. You probably don't want to come over here. 
You must just be absolutely full of chiggers and ticks and fleas and ugh. No, no. Don't go over there. You're going to have a bad day. Well, okay. Very light smoke. Just to get their attention. She just got stung, or he. There he goes. Back to the forest, cow. Bye, cow. Yeah, he got stung, I think. So this one, you can see the nine frames, how they build it out so much. Let's check the outsides. That's kind of going to be our indicator. I wonder if this is ready or not. Okay. Cap Tony. We're good. So. I should have brought my other box. I didn't even think about it. Well, I'm gonna have to go get my spare box. Oh, still got a cow looking at me. I'll be right back. And we're back. So this is the equipment you're gonna need for getting this over of here without a leaf blower or something crazy like that. You just get an empty, empty super. Put it in your card of awesome. And then, get your trusty horse hair brush here. A little matted, but, yeah, you know. So, yeah, let me put that frame back. Now, seems like wherever there's activity, more of them go. Oh, you took that frame out, I see. I'm going to, let's all go over there, yay. So, shake, and your little PO brush, and get a little more PO. All of them should come off. Okay. Deposit, cover. I'll keep everybody else out because I've hauled, you know, I've done this before and didn't cover it. And oh man, you just get boxes and box, you know, bees all in your box. And uh, it's not a good thing. You just get home and uh, all of a sudden, you open up the back of your car or your truck and there's just a hundred plus bees waiting for you on their honey. I'm not very happy you're there again. See, that came in handy. Whoa. It's always good to fall over. nine frame spacers work really well. So I like to at least try to brush them back into their colony just in case they've never been out of the colony. They can find their way back. They're more interesting. Smoke meat. 
okay? So this is how you do it. Go down the chain, one at a time. Lifting gently. Nine frame spacers, you can also flop it up there so you don't lose it back into your hive. That annoys me. Because you'll get it and you'll get one frame up, you'll one side of the frame up, then you lose it and it slides right back down. And you're back where you started. It's like so you got these. This is definitely ready to go. Brush real gentle. I mean, you're just you're just letting the, the brush knock them off. You're not uh, you're not hitting them. You're not scooping them with the brush. It's just. You're gently knocking them off, just like this. So, you know, it's just the very tips of the bristles are hitting them and then they've moved. So, good stuff. And the one beneath this is ready to go. So this might be all I take today. We'll see. But also, if you have one of these wagons, which I found out last time, you pull three supers, on, three and a half supers of honey, yeah, it'll fit in there, but you're gonna have a hell of a time getting through the field back to your truck or your vehicle because it is not fun. Real gentle. all the motion but you're not killing anybody you're not hurting anybody so I don't smell the alarm pheromone it's getting a little more testy you can just feel the vibe change they go from oh it's you to oh it's you let's see what you want And now this empty box will be used to put the frame from the lower box in. So you just always want an empty super to do this. Um, I mean, yeah, you can, some guys have, I mean, some crews like UOG, they've got a leaf blower and three, four people to do this. I don't, I got just me. I need to do this. How I think others will do this by themselves. You know, I like to go in the crevices. Just make sure you get them out of there. And then once we extract, I'll put these back wet. Maybe. I mean, we're mid end of June, so I don't know if I'll do that. I have to give them a little smoke because they're getting a little, a little angry. I don't know why. Oh, I do know why. Too much motion, too much activity, literally stealing their food. They're acting like they should. Got the gist of this, I think. Just real gentle brushing. Okay. You get a few that you cling on, that's fine. I'm talking about you don't want frames and frames of bees finding, you know, sticking on there. I mean, you can't use bee escape. Uh, I don't have the forethought in planning to do that. So, that's why I don't. 
All right. I think we're gonna bring this to the truck. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna use it next. But we're gonna skip all that. You already see me do one. The second will be repetitive. So next time you see us, we'll be uncapping in the garage. Thanks for watching. Keep you stay tuned. All right. <clears throat> Here we are back again. Um, in a very hot uh, garage. Got our this is a carving knife. You can see it's scalloped, so basically it doesn't stick very well. Same kind of principles like a cheese knife. So my setup, I got my extractor here. Um, got my bucket with my 600 micron filter. This part's the trickiest because Eventually, you just get down to that there. Got a couple bees in here with us. That's okay. Then, on these extractors, you put it so the top bar is facing out. And that's it. We'll put the rest of it in soon. The gear and everything. And then you grab your next one. And you'll see eventually this just gets full of cappings and you got a crush and strain. But for now, it's just Go along the wood. a little bit of a corner there you don't keep the blade clear of wax it'll just catch like this and you get you know a bunch that comes out but as long as you're pretty careful should be all right just kind of do a sawing motion It's kind of getting gummed up again. Come back in. Use the wood as your guide. And that's it. Our uncapped comb with a uh, carving knife. All right. Well. That's it for that. That's how it should look. I will uh, stick it in the extractor. We've got two of these. I think my extractor holds eight at a time. You just kind of stack them like this. Slide them in there. There you go. All right. So we'll follow up with... Uh, bottling and everything but that's how you do that and then with these um i don't want to do it right now it makes your hands really messy but make sure you have clean hands and then you come in and you just crush and strain and you know you get you make really tight balls and this is pretty much what you end up with um just a ball of wax and i mean it's going to take a lot of forearm muscles and sometimes you gotta switch hands um but yeah, you can see here, I mean, if you don't want to sit there and crush and strain, eventually this is going to leak out, but it might take a week. So I don't want to wait that long. 
Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, we're gonna move on. So one more little skill you're gonna have to have with uncapping. Get my this capping scraper, capping comb, whatever you want to call it. But here's what you do. Kind of get your finger in here, and it's gonna just be a flicking motion like this. Kind of get it barely underneath. You just flick. You just kind of want to get it underneath and flick it up. And this should not damage any cells. If it does, it shouldn't be too major. You should just be able to... I kind of go from the bottom up. <clears throat> that seems to be what does the best. So, let's see if I can show you here. Just kind of get your, these are very sharp tines. Just kind of just barely get them under and just pull straight up. And that should uncap them. <clears throat> you have to scrape the cappings off every once in a while. And this is for what the knife doesn't get. Especially the sides, you see you do the side, from the side like that, it's kind of not the best. <clears throat> so there you have it. Nice and uncapped. Haven't done this side yet. Whew. It's pretty spicy in a closed garage, but I'm hoping you'll This is smooth like butter. Well, it was anyway. And these cappings are going to get you a ton of honey. I probably got, you know, two to three inches, or maybe four inches up a... Um, Three gallon bucket with these cappings. So don't toss them. You need to use them. So there you go. Crush and strain. Make sure you have a little bowl of water handy and some paper towels. You can rinse your hands off in between. You go in the house, stuff like that. But yeah. So there you have it. Here we are back again. We're going to spin this out. Got the handle on. So basically just start it out. I've actually got mine bolted to a pallet so it doesn't go all over the place. You just let it go. About 93 degrees in here. I'm just pouring sweat, but I think this keeps the honey pretty liquid. So I do it in a closed garage at the end of June. So yeah, just to show you what's really going on here. Grab the handle, keep it going. Or you need an automated one. You need one that, you know. No, you don't. I think this is like 200 bucks on eBay. If you, not eBay, um, Amazon. You know, it's in the description of the video. Uh, I mean, all my stuff that I use is pretty much there. Let's slow this down. All right, so when you're done, this is what you get. Just empty comb, that's what you want. Okay, well now for serious for now this time, bodily. All right, so here we are with our full bucket. Absolutely full, we're good. 
Well, here's what you do. You get your honey gate, get your bottle, and this is going to have a lot of pressure behind it, so you want to really use the honey gate to kind of fill it right to the top you can see it's just leaking out everywhere because like so there's a lot of pressure behind this honey gate all right that's it and you move on to uh, labels <coughs> caps i like these white caps from uh, man lake you just they have the seal inside them so cap on ready to go there's your one pound of honey with honey all over the jar now awesome oh it's dripping down that's why so you gotta kind of get a wet paper towel and clean them off but other than that that's it for bottling so that's been the process from field to bottling uh all right well Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe. Find me on uh, facebook.com forward slash golden legion honey and uh, ask questions or whatever you need to there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.